Chapter 5, Arthur was sitting in his chair, taking out, taking deep breath, for paper cups were lined up in front of him. Arthur stared at them. Well, here they are, he said. Of course, the cups had nothing. One of them, however, might have moved a little. Maybe it's important to line them up perfectly, Arthur added. He nudged one of the cups slightly forward. That's better. The cup says just nothing. Oh, well. He said, Arthur, I don't suppose it'll help to delay this any longer. I guess the time has come. He picked up one cup, raised 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 it toward his mouth, and then stopped. The worm in the cup was wriggling over the side. Arthur made a face. Yuck, said Murphy, coming up behind him. Francine was there too. You aren't really going to eat that, are you? She asked. Arthur put down the cup. Well, he said, I was trying to decide if I should be practicing. Practicing what? Asked Murphy, eating bugs. Not bugs. Worms, Arthur shuddered. Not that I'm sure it makes much of a difference, but somebody ate 60 of these in less than a minute. 60, said Francine. She placed a hand around the stomach. I could never be that hungry. Muffin nodded, even if they were served in the finest restaurant. But we do still want to get into the book. Can you find us some other record to break? Francine asked. Kicking a soccer ball is too boring, and giving up talking isn't good either, said Mafia. I have too much to say. Uh, the flipped through the pages, there are lots of things in here. Let's see, here's a guy who once had a uh, hundred bees in his mouth for ten seconds. Too dangerous, said Francine. Another guy got into a bathtub with forty rattlesnakes. Those are disgusting, said Muffy. And there are any records more glamorous? What about the world's biggest bubble bath? Or shopping spree. No, I don't see anything like that. But if you want glamorous, there was a woman who had a fingernail 10 feet long. Hmm. That sounds interesting. Unfortunately, it says here that fingernails only grow at the rate of 3 inches a year. So you'd have to wait almost 40 years. Murphy frowned. Not to mention all the time I would have spent putting on nail polish. Find something else, said Francine. Something where if we make a mistake, we don't have to start over from scratch. Hey, here's a here's a record. Arthur pointed at the page. The world's largest pizza. It was 30 feet wide. That's big, but not so big we couldn't make one bigger. How long could that take? Muffy and Francis looked at each other. I could talk while we were making it, couldn't I? Muffy asked. Of course, said Muffy, Francine, and I wouldn't have to bounce any topping off my food, would I? Certainly not, said Muffy. They both uh, turned back to Arthur. Okay, they said together. Chapter 6 Arthur, Binky, Francine, and Muffy came running up to the brain outside his house. Buster was with them too. But he was a little bit behind because he was still walking backward. Guess what, brain, said Arthur. We, we have the brain held up a hand. Hold on, Arthur. I'm glad all of you are here. You will make excellent witnesses. Witnesses, said Francine. Witnesses to what? To history, said the brain. I'm just about ready to demonstrate. He took a screwdriver, made a few last adjustments. There, it's all set. What is it? Said, asked Pinky. The brain smiled proudly. A remote control flying a lawn sprinkler. The first in the world, I believe. It looks like an airplane with the garden hose attached, said Francine. To the layman, maybe, said the brain. Actually, it's a complicated matrix of aerodynamic and hydraulic interfaces. Now stand back. The brain punched a few buttons, the uh, airplane took off. Stage one complete. Now for stage two, the brain turned the dial. As the airplane banked, banked around, spray was released from the garden hose. It sprinkled over the ground. You see, he said, uh, it's working. Yes, but said Arthur, history in the making. The brain went on. Aren't you glad you're here? Yes, bud, said Francine. Duck, cried Muffy. The plane buzzed over the heads, shocking them thoroughly. That shouldn't have happened, said the brain, punching one, one button after another. Oh, oh, said Buster, who had just arrived. Plane has stalled in midair. It sputtered once and then crashed to the ground. Sorry, said the brain. I guess I haven't worked out all the details yet. Apparently, the global positioning navigator still needs work. I'm sure you'll figure it out, said Arthur, but we were wondering if you'd like to join us. 
We are thinking of making the world's largest pizza, said Muffy. With your help, said Francine. Blaine scratched his head. He looked down at his flying sprinkler. Um, the world's largest pizza? Eh, I bet Edison never thought of that. So let's work on the details, said Arthur. It took about an hour for everything to be decided. All right, said Arthur. It looks like we'll need 500 pounds of flour, 100 pounds of cheese, 25 gallons of tomato sauce. Muffy, we are in charge of getting donation. That many ingredients are going to be expensive, right? I'll start with my dad. Bink and I will make the rack to cook the pizza on, said the brain. The playing field at school will probably be the safest open space. We'll need a permission from Mr. Haney, said Francine. I'll take care of that, and I'll ask my dad to get the tin foil and the barbecue coals, said Arthur. Buster, right here. It's hard to tell if you're listening since you're not looking at me. I can see you in the mirror. Okay, since your mommy is a reporter, you're in charge of contacting the newspapers and TV station. Buster nodded, which shook his mirror loose again. All right, I think that covers everything. Don't worry, this whole thing will be a piece of cake. Everyone stared at him. Hey, you know what I mean? At chapter 7 at dinner the next night, Arthur brought his family up to date. Everything seems to be coming along, he said. Francine took care of all the permission, and Buster's mom has contacted the TV station. We want to make sure we have plenty of proof for the book people. Arthur entered the long, dark chamber all alone. At the fair end, far end, his three figures in black robes sat behind a high bench. Step forward, Mr. Reed, said the one in the middle. We understand, we understand. You wish to be uh, included in the next edition of the Book of Incredible and Amazing World Records? Arthur swallowed nervously. That's right, Your Honor. I have photographs and the videotapes and signatures of everyone who helped. And you call that proof, said the figure on the right. I was hoping it would be enough. We'll be the judges of that, said the figure on the left. Arthur, said Dad, huh? What about food? Mafia and her dad got in touch with the supermarket. Everything we need has been ordered. They keep it refrigerated until we pick it up. When cooking a pizza that big, be tricky, Mom asked. Arthur nodded. That's why we put the brain in charge of making the calculation. He started to explain it to me, something about BTUs, I think. He also worked out a formula for how much charcoal we need per square foot. As long as he understands it, that's all that matters. Yeah, whatever happens, said Mom, the part I like best is that you are all working together. Arthur nodded. But he is still trying to break his own record, though. He even turned around his desk at school so that he wouldn't accidentally stand up. And walk forward by mistake. Really? What did Mr. Rappan say about that? He decided to consider it a kind of science experiment. He also said that anything that helps Buster concentrate might be an improvement. Dad nodded. Sounds like you have everything covered. Not everything, said D.W. What do you mean? What if the pizza gets stolen? She asked. Stolen? Arthur frowned. How? Well, said D.W. With all that cheese, an army of mice might sneak up and carry it off. Arthur rolled his eye. Yeah, that one happened, D.W., but if it did, how would you stop it? Mom, Mrs. Sri stopped to think. D.W., what are mice afraid of? Cats. So maybe you could make pictures of cats we could put up to scare away the mice. D.W. nodded. I could do that, of course. Even without armies of mice, there are plenty of other things to plan for. Whenever you cook on a big scale, there are always surprises. I know. I just hope we are ready for them. Chapter 8. The soccer field at Lakewood Elementary was a busy place that Saturday morning. Everyone has gathered for the big event, and hopes were running high. At least they had begun that way. Food preparations had started early, with Francine and Muffy mixing pizza dough. As time had passed, they both had become covered in flour. At this point, they looked like a two-out-of-season snowman. The bar was spinning the dough to thin out. He had never tried it just before, but he had seen it done on TV. First, most of his toes had landed in the tree branches, but he was getting better. The dough that survived had been passed on to Mr. Reed, who connected each piece to a growing carpet of dough. Oh, my arms are going to fall off. They are so tired. So, was he no stopping now? There's still too much to do. Muffy rubbed flour off her nose. We've been... At this for hours, I'm starting to think it's impossible. Maybe we beat off more than we can chew. 
said Binky, pulling some dough out of his hair. Time for a break, said Machine. You can take a break, Arthur instead. He looked at his clipboard. We are already on our behind schedule. Buster should be here soon. You can rest when it takes your place. But I'm exhausted now, said Muffy. My hands are so pooped. Even my fingernails are tired. We'll be back soon, said Francine. We promise. You promise? Arthur gaped at them. The book of incredible and amazing world record doesn't care about promises. It isn't interested in good content intention. It only cares about results. I'm gonna never thought about it that way, said Binky. He yawned. I think I'll take five, too. Arthur shook his head as Binky, Francine, and Muffin walked away. This is terrible. We are going to get into the book of world record as the biggest flop in its history. I'll be humiliated. All right, class, said Mr. Weapon. It's time to discuss uh, the greatest fiascos in history. We are talking about the disaster that no one, no one ever forgets. Yes, Buffy? I was watching this awards show on TV last year. There was uh, this one actress, whose outfit was uh, really ridiculous. Oh, a sad day for fashion, I'm sure, said Mr. Rappin. But not a significant moment in the larger historical record. Francine raised her hand. What about the Titanic? Mr. Rappin nodded. There's certainly one. Significant and tragic, a night to remember. Any others? The brain had one. Napoleon defeated Waterloo. Excellent. Not his best day by a long shot. Definitely on anyone's top ten list. Let's see, though. What about the worst one of all? The flop that stands head and shoulders above the rest. Any idea? Must every hand in the class went up. My, my. You all seem very positive about this. Perhaps we could all say it all together. Arthur's pizza cried the whole class. Chapter 9, Arthur said, at the edge of the soccer field, his head in his hands. What a terrible day. Why had he ever gotten himself into this mess? What had made him think something like this could really happen? I wish I could just disappear, he murmured. He knew that his father and the brain were still working, but every second put them put further and further behind. We are not going to be able to do it. He said, this was the dumbest idea I ever had. I should. And he said, Here comes Buster. Arthur sighed. Oh, great. Better late than never, I suppose. But he is just one person. And what difference can one? Arthur stopped speaking because he had looked up. It was true that Buster was coming and still walking backward, but he wasn't alone. A crowd was following him, including Arthur's mom, Grandma Thora, Mr. Rappan, Sue Ellen, Fawn, and many others. The brain smiled. I think he brought half the town with him. Hi, Arthur, said Buster, waving. Look who I found. Before Arthur could fully observe this, he heard his name called. From the other end of the field, you who, Arthur, it was Francine and Muffy, but they weren't alone either. The other half of the town seemed to be with them. Muffy's dad was there, and the mechanics from his auto dealership, dealership, and Prunella, Catherine, and the brain's mom. For an industrial-sized pizza, you need industrial strength equipment, she said. So I brought my mixing machine from the ice cream shop. Arthur was amazed. This is great. Everyone got busy. Several people unrolled long rolls of chicken while over the hot coals that the brain had prepared. Arthur's father stirred the tomato sauce. Francine and Murphy went back to mixing dough, but this time they had help. When Mr. Reed uh, thought that the carpet of dough was big enough, it was unrolled over the chicken wire. Then he cut the edge to make it round. But how are we going to get the tomato sauce over the middle? Ask Arthur, it is too far to reach, and we can walk over the rest of the dough to get there. Have no fear, said the brain. We've got the cover, so to speak. He took out his remote control, lunch sprinkler. It was now connected to a vat of tomato sauce. The airplane wheezed back and forth, depositing the sauce over everything except the crowd of people. Then the cheese went on, clumped loosely into the bowls, launched by an army of spatula. Can someone hit that bare spot in the middle? Asked Mr. Reed. A good shot, Francine. Slices of pepperoni came next, followed by olive. No juggling the olives, Murphy told Pinky. You're not supposed to play with your food. Arthur stepped way back 
to take everything in. So what do you think? His mom asked him. Well, said Arthur, beaming, this just may work after all. Chapter 10. Is it time yet? This was the question everyone had been asking. Arthur must have said no 50 times, but now he didn't. Biggest pizza in the world is now ready to eat, he announced. You do the cutting, said his father. It was your idea, don't forget. I, I won, said Arthur, smiling. He cut off a piece and handed it to Buster. Then the brain, Francine, Muffy, and Binky came forward to pose for picture. Everyone cheered, speech, Arthur, speech, they cried. Arthur turned a little red as he stepped forward. Wow, guys, I don't really know what to say, so I'm going to keep it short. Thanks for helping out, making all this possible. We did it. Elwood City has made the biggest pizza in the world. The record belongs to us all, and now everybody is. He didn't have to ask why. As everybody dug in, Buster pulled Arthur aside. Do you remember how far I have to walk? To break the world record for walking backwards, I think it was about 8,000 miles. Buster nodded. Oh, then I'm going to need my strength. He stepped forward toward the pizza. Uh-oh. Um, Buster, what? Do you realize what you just did? Oh, no. I just walked forward. He sighed deeply. I guess I'll have to start over. And taking an extra slice with him, he slowly backed away. The end.